Hello, welcome to Pay It Forward. Before we start today, I would like to first of all give a great big shout out to a lovely follower of mine and her name is Claudine. I hope I'm saying that right. And she has sent me this beautiful hand beaded African tie. Isn't it absolutely amazing? It's a little upcycled, recycled gift from Claudine. So thank you so much. I really appreciate that. It was a big surprise and I hope I'm wearing it well for you. So today's project, what have we got? Well, it's extremely hot here in Oz right now. So this took all of my imagination to try and come up with a snowman of all things, but it is coming up for that time of the year. Now, I have absolutely no experience with snow, none. So Christmas in Oz is usually beaches and barbecues. So. I hope I've got him right for you all. Now I have made him up in all sorts of patchwork white fabrics so it's going to be very easy for you all to make. Made nearly entirely on the machine. Got the sweetest little felt hat. So you just need a great pattern and I've got that all ready for you as usual and it is free and all you need to do to access that those free pattern templates is click on the link in the description box below. You'll find your free pattern templates in there. If you're on a mobile device you need to first click on that little grey arrow. It's right there in the corner and that will open up the description box and you'll find that link in there. When you go to print out your pattern pieces, do check your printer settings first and make sure that you've got them set. It's set to print at actual size because sometimes printers will resize for no apparent reason whatsoever just to be awkward. So we want your pattern templates to be absolutely spot on. So get those printed out and then let's get busy making our little snowman. Right, so let's get started with what we'll need to make our little snowman. Now we'll start with his body pieces. And what I've done is I've got a, quite a few different uh, white print fabrics you can see there. It'll be a little bit tricky to see, but there's all sorts of got paisleys and little self prints and even a cream that's got a few icy blue stars on it. Some lovely silver prints there. So keeping in with all of those tones, you can make him in quite strong creams and he'll still definitely look very snowman. So these are your main body pieces and you need to cut eight of those. Now they are all interfaced with my usual favorite medium weight cotton woven fusible interfacing. And you do need to interface this little project um, to keep that lovely little ball shape. So we've got eight of those and then similarly for the head, the same little range of fabrics and we have eight of those pieces. Now make sure when you're cutting your little head pieces, there's a little marking on your templates that shows you the neck base. It's a, the pattern piece looks very similar end to end but it isn't so make sure you put those marks in so you know which ones are on the neck. So we've got those and also on your little body pieces your front panel that you're going to be using which will have your little um, buttons on choose your front panel and everything else will work on from there so once you have your front panel chosen you'll also see that I've put marks on your template for your little buttons and there's also a little mark to put on your reverse side and that is for your little ribbon loop. We put a little ribbon loop which means you'll need a little bit of ribbon. This one is just a 10 millimeter ribbon and it's just a loop we insert into that seam and it helps hold our little, well it helps snowman hold his little broom. So that just slips in there. So just that bit of extra support. So you also need a little bit of 10 millimeter ribbon, something that will suit and make sure that you add your little marks there ready for your buttons. So you will also need three little Christmassy type buttons. And I've done this whole project quite basic. Um, you can absolutely, you know, really Christmas it up. Um, you can put all sorts of detailing on it. You could um, use some very Christmassy sparkly buttons there. I'm just going for the basics. So you've got your three buttons chosen and you've got your head pieces so that's our body sorted. The body will be pulled in at the base and we will need a little base cover and that one is felt with the interfacing applied. And you will also need for your base, which I have here somewhere, 
you will need a little base piece and that is cut from, I cut mine from matte board, it's very very firm and um, I've actually glued two pieces together just using a PVA white glue so this is very strong and it just gives him a nice little flat base to stand up on. Uh, you can get that from your local picture framer's matte board. I, I just get my uh, picture framer, he keeps all my little, keeps his off cuts for me so that's very handy. So we also have our little pieces for our hat, a very cute little hat. So his little hat I've made with a little different colour under the brim um, and then black on the top. So we'll get this sort of effect, a little green showing. You could use any colour or you can make it all black if you like. You'll also need your, your side hat pieces, your two side hat pieces and you'll also need the top of your hat piece and on our little side hat pieces we're going to add our little felt pieces to make a little band. Now this could be anything, this could be Christmas ribbon, it could be braid, anything you like to pop on there. I'm using felt because I have so much of it. Now the hat pieces are all interfaced with that same woven, woven uh, interfacing and these little uh, band pieces are just felt with heat and bond applied so we can press those on. So all of those pieces have that interfacing applied. We need our little carrot nose and that is the same thing, it is just interfaced felt, those two little pieces there. I make up a hem, up a very very simple little scarf, it's actually almost exactly the same as my little um, video I have for a little doggy scarf. It's very simple to make and this is made up out of fleece so I've just got this time I'm using two different colours of fleece um, and it's very quick and easy to make up. Your measurements for that one are in your, uh, on your templates. I also make a little felt tassel for the end of our little snowman's little broom, very simple to make. Now this piece, um, you've also got your measurements uh, there with your templates and this one is cut from double felt. Double felt is just two pieces of felt joined together with uh, fusible webbing or heat and bond and uh, we actually uh, make our little tassel out of that one. Now eyes um, is up to you. I've actually used safety eyes with this little one um, this time I'm going to be using my little teddy bear glass eyes. I'm using 10 millimeter. You can make the eyes much bigger if you like. I tend to like uh, smaller eyes. It sort of just looks more detailed but so I'm going for the 10 millimeter glass eyes. Alternatively you can use buttons um, and we will put them in in the same way. We'll actually pull them in. This little one, I don't know if you can see him there lie down there we go so here's little eyes there are safety eyes and they do tend to sit on top it's great if you're making this for children to play with um, but I like the eyes to be just a little more sunk into the head so we can do that with buttons or our glass eyes so I've also got a couple of little bells to add to my little um, my little broom at the end now the neck Adding the, the head to the body, I'm going to give you a few different ways to do the, this this time. I'm going to joint it because why wouldn't I? It's easy and I have all the joints. Um, so that's very simple but it's just as easy to sew on. And I'm going to show you how to do that as we get uh, to that point. So you can, you can use either option but if you do want to joint it, I'm using a 40 millimeter joint that I've made up myself. And I actually do have a video on how to make my joints. I might even pop that link up there for you. So you'll also need some clear craft glue. We're going to need, if you're jointing, you're going to need your bit of super glue. You're going to need a little wooden uh, stick or something like that to make up your little broom. I just buy these in a pack, they're just from the, the cheap store and they come in all sorts of different colours so I didn't even have to paint them so I'm going to use a red one this time and they just happen to be the perfect length but you know you could use um, an old pencil 
um, anything like that would work. You're sure to find something like that in the, in the craft stores. You're going to need doll needles, absolutely, for this project. Um, and you're going to need your extra strong threads, a few different colours if you have them, and also some pearl thread and some extra black pearl thread, a little bit thicker for sewing the little mouth line in. And we're going to be filling him completely with just our polyester filling. Um, I have added a little bit of rice in a stocking in this one, but you don't need to add any weight. He does take a, quite a bit of uh, filling, polyester filling, so make sure that you have enough. And I do pack him quite firm so that he does sit up nicely and so that all of these parts are much easier to sew on um, when he's nice and firm. So that's about it. So, and he's really straightforward to make. He really is. He's just got a, he's just got a few pieces. That's all. But they're very quick to make, and it's made almost entirely on the machine. So let's move everything out the way that we don't need. And remember that we had our front, our first panel chosen for the very front of our little snowman here and we're going to put the buttons on. Now we can put those on now before we start assembling it. So I've got my little button places marked so I'm just going to line them up and that is our very first step is just to sew those little buttons in place. So there you can see I've got my little buttons in place and I've also gone ahead and stitched my little loop into place where I've got my little mark on the back there and just make sure that you check that whatever you've chosen for your little handle is going to slip through there and remember we're going to have a little seam allowance there. Okay so that one's all in place and ready so now all we need to do is go ahead and start putting together our body and that's just as simple as deciding what sort of colourway you want to happen as your little uh, yes, your little body goes around and sewing them in place. Now I'm going to be using my little clips, my little wonder clips as I go and I'm going to be sewing from the top to the base which is all we do, just from this top edge down to the base there and then we flip that one over. I don't press these seams out I actually just roll those seams all out between my fingers and thumbs once they're done all the way around and also another tip uh, for sewing this sort of thing if you start with your first piece and you sew from the top to the bottom just continue that with all of your pieces don't flip it around and sew some of them from the bottom to the top because if we do it all the same way we really eliminate any twisting and we keep that ball absolutely uh, nice and uh, nice and round so whatever you choose at the beginning just stay with that all the way through so I'm just going to go ahead now I do sew mine two times because I really do pack that body quite firm um, and uh, and just make my way around until I have a whole ball and then I will join those last two pieces together I'll get those all stitched up and I will show you how that looks so just to show you, that's our first little two pieces put on either side of that front panel. You can see that little ribbon is incorporated there and I've just rolled out those seams there. And my seam allowance is four millimetres as usual. So you can see that's our little body starting to take shape and I will just keep on adding my pieces all the way around that little body. So that has my little body all sewn together and now I've taken my extra strong thread and I've got a double strand and I've just gone around that top neck edge there just about five millimeters in just half a centimeter in and I've gone right the way around that edge left my tail ends hanging and then I've just tied off just one little knot and I'm going to pull that neck edge in now we've got to leave just a little space just a little space and regardless of how you're going to be attaching the head we just want that little space there and we're just going to knot that off just a couple of times so that's nice and secure and of course that allows if you're jointing the head there's enough room there for that little bolt to pass through also just make sure that's really secure 
just snip those little ends and then we can just pull that body through and we've got that nice little shape that all comes together at the top but also sits quite flat there okay so that's our little body and we can put that one aside because that one is all ready so our next step is to do exactly what we just did with the body to make the head exactly the same and remember what I said about watching that your little marks are all lined up at the bottom so that your bottom pieces are all all together or it will change the the, the uh, shape of the head also um, remember that the front whatever you choose for the front panel of his little face make sure that it's quite plain so that we don't have any very loud um, fabrics, busy fabrics right in the middle where his little facial features are because we want those to really show up. So keep that front section quite plain and then your busier prints you can put around the outside. So you can go ahead and follow the same procedure with stitching all of those little pieces together to make that little ball. And so there I've got my little head all stitched up just like my little body and I have also done the same thing with that little drawstring around the top. That's the top of the head, not the neck. And now all we need to do is fill that little head. Now if you are adding safety eyes, you'll need to temporarily stuff this little head so that you can mark in your little eye placements and trust me you do need to give it a temporary stuff first because you'll never get those eyes in the right place just by estimating so just give that a little fill and then make your marks pop those little safety eyes in um, then you can uh, go ahead and restuff the head but for now because I'm adding my little uh, teddy bear eyes um, I'm going to be just filling that head so you can use your forceps or just uh, stuff with your hands. There's a bit of room in this little guy, so filling with your hands, and certainly there's parts of it where it's more beneficial to use your fingers this time. And it really is just about evenly traveling around and around and around and keep pushing all the way around. Keep rotating that little ball as you're filling, and we want that nice and firm because we're going to be stitching that little hat on we're also going to be stitching that little carrot nose on and the firmer it is the easier it is for you to sew those on and uh, fill that right up to that neck edge that's regardless of how you're going to be attaching the head and we can use our felting a uh, needle wool felting needle and pack those fibers in so i'm going to get that little head packed nice and firm and so there we go we've got a nice firm little head there you can see there's not any give in that at all so i've also gone ahead around the base and done that same little gathering stitch again that we've done before on the top and on the body top of the head and the body and so that one's pulled in now regardless of how you're attaching your head you still do this drawstring and we're going to pull it in now if you're using a joint of course here is where we're going to slip that little joint in into that little neck area and I've got my knot tied and I will pull that one in push that joint right in and pull those threads right up as close as I can to that uh, bolt there here's where you need max can I have your finger for a minute um, to hold that knot so I will pull that right in and tie that off about three or four times if you are not using a joint you still do the same thing and you just pull those edges right in and tie them off. There you can see my little joint is nice and snug in there and I've actually gone around there a second time make sure that doesn't ever pull away. Now our next step is to add our eyes. If you've done your safety eyes they're already there and in for you. Um, I'm going to add mine now. So I'm using little teddy bear placement eyes, eye pins. So you can get those at all teddy bear supply stores. They're very handy for choosing exactly the size of your eye and uh, where you're going to put them. So I've made both of my little holes there ready using my awl just to either side, push that right down, give yourself a little passageway for those threads to travel. And I have my longest doll needle and I've got my double thread, extra strong thread here. And I'm going to take that through 
a little loop on my eye, open that loop up and pull those threads through. So my little eye is anchored on that double thread. And then I'm just going to re-thread my ends straight through that doll needle. And I'm going to dive straight in to where I made that little hole and I'm going to come out at the very, very base of my little neck there and pull that one all the way through. Now if you've got a little button that has a shank on it, you can add those in the same way and you'll need to make your hole a little bit larger to accommodate that shank because you want those little eyes to sit right in. So I've got that one pulled in. You can see I'm going to get a nice little bit of pull in there. And you can see there, there's my little exit hole which I'm going to make a little more obvious there with my awl. So see that hole there? I'm now going to re-thread the other eye, re-thread the other eye onto its thread and go in and I'm going to come out of the same hole that I just came out of. So now you can see I've got both of those eyes in and both of my threads are coming out the back here and I've tied a first knot and you can see I can tug on those little thread ends, tighten that knot until I've got them as deep as I want them to be and then I will just knot off at least three or four times and I'm tying it off because I've come out of that same hole, I'm tying that those off to the stuffing not to the back of the head so the the, the fabric won't divot in and uh, I'm tying that knot off into the stuffing. So then I'll just be able to re-thread my needle and take my thread ends back into that little hole and lose them in the head. So I'm going to tie those off nice and firm. Right, so that has my little eyes nicely into place. I'm happy with that. And before we can stitch our little mouth line in, we really need to have our little carroty nose made so that we can just judge where that's going to sit. So let's go ahead and make our little carrot nose. So that is just as simple as putting our right sides together and we're just going to stitch around the entire outside edge there. I do reinforce and sew two times around that tip there. We're going to stitch around that. It's the same little four millimeter seam allowance. Keep it as small as you can. And then we're just gonna turn that one through. So that's my little uh, carrot nose stitched and turned through. And now we're just going to pack that little one. Um, easier with forceps if you have them. Just support that end as you're filling that one. And we're gonna pack that one nice and tight. This is where your wool felting needle will come in handy. You want it nice and tight. Again, a nice firmly packed little nose is much easier to stitch on. So keep going right up into the top. Leave yourself a little bit of space at the top because we're gonna pull a little drawstring around that top edge. You can see there I have stuffed that little carrot nose and I've used my wool felting needle to keep all those fibres down there. Packed that nice and flat across the top and I've run a single drawstring of my extra strong thread and just pulled in and tied off just enough to tuck those little edges under so that when we add it to our little face there we won't have any raw edges. Now you can leave it like this if you want to add a few little um, swirls around it, uh, make some little ridges in your little carrot. You can take your extra strong thread with a doll needle right through the center there with a knot on the end and you can simply just wind around. You can make that a very gnarly sort of little carroty shape. Pulling those threads in and then just dive in. Pull that one tight and just knot off on the edge there. Right, so now you can see I've just temporarily pinned my little carrot nose into place. We're not gonna sew that on until after, 
but we are going to stitch in our little mouth line now I'm using my doll needle to do this and I'm I've got a knot at the end and it's just a single thread it's a heavier weight pearl thread and you can see that I've marked in just the corners of my mouth now look this can be completely random you can do a little half little smirky smile um, you can link all your stitches up for a full clear line if that's what you want I'm just going to do just a little running stitch so it's it's going to have spaces between each stitch um, because we want this to look you know really quite primitive looking um, so I'm going to start at the base of my of my little snowman's head and come out there anywhere right on the edge I'm going to dive back into that hole and just come out right on my first mark there so I've only made three so I'm really going to be just taking it as I go as I said this does not have to be perfect because it wouldn't be on a little snowman so I'm just going to take my first stitch and I'm thinking about that curve going around as I'm taking that stitch so I'm going to jump a little further ahead so that I can back stitch so there's my first stitch in place and then I'm going to back stitch I'm going to jump ahead your stitches don't have to be all the same they can all be quite random and as close together as you like and you can see each time I'm just going to back stitch and come out again and make my way up to the other side and that's given me a lovely little mouth line there and you can see I've just ended off down the bottom there and cast off on the base where those stitches won't be seen so I'm going to pull that little nose off now um, and we've got to join our head to our body now I'm going to show you obviously I'm using a joint so I'm going to just pass that little bolt straight through I'm going to make sure that all of my fabric is pushed down around that bolt add my disc my washer and my nut I'll just give that one a finger tighten and just check that I've got everything where I want it to be and make sure that I haven't got any fabric caught up there and I'm actually lining it up with that front panel it's a joint so the head will be able to move but I do like to line it all up so once I've done that I will just take my spanner and tighten that one up so it's nice and secure and then I will go ahead with my super glue and I will just add a couple of drops of super glue right in there on the groove of that little nut there so that that little nut will never come away so now I've got that little head on nice and secure with my joint what I need to do now is just go ahead and fill that body so I'm going to fill that body just as firm as I filled the head now it'll take quite a bit of filling um, but it's very easy to do because our hands can fit up there he's quite a decent size this little snowman and you'll find that you can tuck it in there and you can keep working around as you go so keep turning his little body and adding more stuff and you can use quite large pieces it'll he'll fill quite quickly um, but if you keep turning him as you go it will be filled out nice and evenly now if you are sewing the head on 
all you need to do is start filling your body in exactly the same way so I want you to start filling your body and keep filling that body until we get about halfway down and then I'll come back and I'll show you a technique for sewing on the head so for sewing your little head on this is a little simple technique now I've got filling about halfway up into that body so if you're sewing your head on you'll grab that little head now and you've got that ready but you start with your extra long doll needle and we've got four strands so a doubled length of extra strong thread passed through that needle so we've actually got four strands of extra strong thread what you will do is dive in and you'll come out right in the center my joint is there so I can't come out there but you'll come right in and come out right at the center where you pulled that drawstring in you will then go in through the drawstring base of your little head and you'll take your needle all the way through that head until the top here and come out just this side so just this side of your little hole here and you'll come all the way out so you need a really long thread then you're going to dive your needle back in and you're going to travel down again back through that that little hole of course it's traveling a different path back through that little neck hole back into that body and you will come out through your stuffing again and then what you'll do is just like tying your eyes in you're going to take you you'll have your four your your two little threads of, of four each aside and you'll just tie those in and you'll be tying it into the stuffing and your little head would be pulled in so you can tie that nice and tight and that stuffing will hold it and then you can repeat it and you could repeat it going slightly another way and so you've got two lots of threads coming down you've tied them all off and that little head will sit just nicely like that I think that's the best way to add this little head you have to remember that it's not it's not a toy it's not being played with if it is being played with then I recommend the neck joint um, you can also just fully stuff your body and then just ladder stitch your little head on all the way around using your doll needle that's totally fine as well but your your little body will need to be packed nice and firm and remember if you're just sewing the head on that way remember we've got a lovely big scarf going around his neck so a lot of that won't be seen so but that's the way I would recommend it if you're not using a joint I would be taking my needle right the way through and back down again tying off into that stuffing do that one again and then you just continue on and finish filling your little snowman so I'm just going to go ahead and keep on filling my little snowman right now that I've got my little body nice and filled up nice and firm now I've also added in there I do recommend that you add a little bit of weight in the base there it does help him stand up nicely we are giving him a flat base but he sits better with a bit of weight just before that disc there so I've added a little bag of rice which uh, I've encased in uh, just an old bit of stocking and popped that in there a little bit more filling and then I've added my little disc so I've gone ahead and sewn that same double thread extra strong thread gathering stitch around that edge and I've popped in my little wood my little cardboard base that I've got already there and again all I'm going to do is just pull those in and pull that in and knot that off about four times now we don't need to get right into the center just enough to cover that disc so when I've pulled that right in we're going to be adding that little felt cover that goes over the top so pull it in as as tight as you can but it doesn't have to meet up in the middle so you can see that's got that one pulled in nicely and I've gone around the second time with that one so now all I need to do is add my little felt disc on the base and I've just taken my clear craft glue just a, a, a glue that's suitable for fabric that dries pretty quickly and um, and it dries clear so I've just popped some all over my little disc there and I'm just going to add that one there 
just making sure that it's all nice and central and we will press that one down and just give that probably about 15 minutes or so to dry just make sure it's all pressed into place we can stand him up and you can see with that bit of weight he stands up beautifully so we're just going to let that one dry for a bit so while that little base is drying we can go ahead and actually sew on our little nose here now I'm using my extra strong thread and I've just got a big knot at the end it's a single strand and you can see that I've really pinned that all into position there so it's nice and flat and central so my first stitch is I'm just going to dive in underneath and take up some of that head and I'm going to come out on the edge somewhere it really doesn't matter where see that I'm taking some of that carrot fabric and pulling that one all the way in that little knot will be hidden we can tuck that in behind so that won't be seen and it's really just a simple matter of diving in taking up some of that the head fabric each time very tricky to show you on camera and coming out somewhere on the base of that little carrot nose and it works best with a medium doll needle so you can see I've come through there it's not going to move while I've got all my pins in place there and that's going to pull that little one onto the little face there so again I'm going to dive in take up some of that underneath head fabric and come out somewhere on the base pull that one in tight dive back into the base of that little carrot and you can see I'm just going to go backwards and forwards and diagonal until I feel like that whole little outer edge is stitched very securely on so there you can see that little little carroty nose all stitched on nicely so now we're just going to stitch that little base into place and I'm just using my pearl thread in just a cream I've got a knot in the end it's just a single thread and I'm going to tuck my needle just under any way anywhere around that little circle would be fine and I'm going to come out on the edge and I'm going to be sewing a blanket applique stitch um, which is a nice way just to finish off this little edge um, I do have a video that shows you how to sew this stitch and I'm going to put that link up there for you but all I'm going to do is just make my stitches they're probably going to be about five millimeter here I'm going through both the layers and coming out right on the edge of that of that little shape there making sure that I pull my needle through the loop each time and that's going to give me a nice little binding stitch make sure that you are catching that fabric here each time so that that's pulling that little felt disc onto the fabric that's quite easy to do that's a nice uh, a big piece to handle so it's fine pulling that one each time you can see there that's going to just secure that little edge nice and tight all the way around to that little base there and it's just a lovely finish so I'm going to make my way all the way around that little circle so that has our little basic snowman all done that little base this nicely stitched into place and so let's now move ahead and start making his little accessories and let's start with his little scarf so you can make him a little scarf in all sorts of ways you may have some special fabric that you want to just stitch up and hem up and pop around his neck or uh, perhaps you have um, perhaps you can knit one or a crochet one I'm just doing a very simple scarf this is actually um, exactly like my little dog scarf 
very simple to make up. Now I've given you the measurements, so there with your templates and I've just used a, just a fine polar fleece. I'm using two colours this time. So I've got my two pieces right sides together, I've got them pinned together and I've just made a mark at the end just about five centimetres in from each end, from this lower end. We're going to start our stitching here and we're going to make sure we back and forth and we're going to stitch the entire length of the scarf across the top here all the way back down to our other mark on the other side. And that's got my little scarfs all stitched up. I'm just taking the corners off there of those little edges there and before I turn it through I've just gone ahead and just snipped up to the line of that start there those little tassels in. This is polar fleece so it won't fray away. Now I'm just going to turn this one through and now I've just pushed out those corners there and my next step is I'm just going to create the little loop at the end that we'll be tucking our little scarf through. So I'm just going to turn that end under and it's only about five and a half centimetres this measurement here and I'm just, just going to do a straight stitch just back and forth along that edge there. So that has our little scarf all sewn, that's made our little pocket there for that end to go through. You can just use a standard quarter inch seam allowance for this little scarf, that will work very well. So we just pop that one on and we just need to tuck that little end through that little pocket that we've made. And of course you can embellish this any way you like. You can add all sorts of little buttons and fixtures and so on. I like it with the two different colours because that little, the little piece showing underneath is really nice. So there he is, he's got his little scarf. So our next step is to start making our little hat, the all important hat. So the first step with our little hat is we're going to add our little band that goes around um, the crown of our hat. Now these little pieces have fusible webbing on the back. We're just going to remove those papers. And these are going to be fused into place with a hot iron and a protective cloth. Now you'll see where they sit. They will line up with the side there and it leaves probably about six millimetres at the base. And that's so that's not too bulky for when we're sewing that little brim onto the crown. So just line those up and just get those pressed into place and make sure that they're both even so that when we sew them up at the side seams they all match up nicely. Get those pressed on. Once you've got them pressed on, I just sew a top stitch right close to the edge down each side just so that they're nicely settled into place. So we've got our little hat band pieces in place and now we're just going to put right sides together and we're going to sew those little side seams. Now you can take these two side seams just a little bit deeper. So probably five to six millimeter seam. I'm going to start at the bottom and back and forth. Make sure that you're back and forth on the start and the finish there just because we want them a little bit bigger because we want to really press those open out, out open and flat. Um, so just do both sides. So that has our little side seam sewn. I've just flipped that through and rolled those seams out. So I'm just going to pop that one back again. And now we're going to just press those little seams out nice and flat there. And we're going to add our top circle. And this is all about the pinning and putting in a little circle. Now this one, we can actually sew it on the machine. I've made it big enough so that we can. But I'm going to show you how to pin it really easily. So we're going to pin through both, both layers, flip our little hat over, take some of that underside fabric and push our pin head all the way down. And that way our little pins will be out of the way. We are going to sew an overcasting stitch first. Taking a bit of fabric from the other side each time, you'll find that you'll be able to work your way around that little circle. And that little top circle will fit in beautifully. So keep making your way around and get that one all pinned in. So there you can see I've got that one all pinned in and it fits beautifully. And all we need to do is go around all that outside edge, just using my extra strong thread 
and I'm just going to sew that overcasting stitch right the way around and you do need to do this overcasting stitch because we're going to tuck this one under the machine to actually sew the seam and we don't want any pins in the way and so the overcasting stitch will hold it nicely for us so you can make your way right the way around that little a circle edge and then you can take it to the machine and tuck it under there and it's as I said it's big enough to stitch on the machine just make sure that you're rotating it and pulling out making sure that you've got a nice straight edge as you're sewing so that has my little circle stitched in if you're not feeling confident on the machine to do that one you can sew that one in uh, by hand using a stab back stitch so just pop that one through and we're just going to push that little top seam out and we've got the lovely little top of our hat nice to see it all coming together and really roll that seam out especially on those side seams there so we've got a nice little rounded finish the top of our hat so now we can move on to make our little brim so we've got our two little brim pieces and we put them right sides together because we're actually going to sew them together and turn them through so all you need to do is add your little clips if you like which I will right around the outside and I will just sew with my four millimeter seam allowance the entire outside edge because we'll be turning it through the center right so there is my little hat brim um, and you can see there that I've turned it through and I've given it a little press and then it's probably easy to see on the green side that I've just gone around and sewn those edges together with a little zigzag on the machine it's going to hold them together while we're going to pin this one into place and sew it into place so our next step of course is to add a little brim and I don't top stitch this edge I actually like it quite rounded nice and soft and rounded so our next step is to pin our little brim into place and I do that by popping of course right sides together make sure that you've got it set that your little hat will have the right color showing and I'm going to put my two edges together I'm working from the brim side and I'm going to take my pin and pin in the same way grabbing some from the other side so this is probably the trickiest part in the whole project but it's once you've got it all pinned into place it's not too bad we're just going to hand sew this one into place make sure those little seams are open and flat and we're just going to make our way around and pin that one all the way into place if you followed your seam allowance you should be fine otherwise you may have to do a little bit of easing um, but I'll get this one all pinned and I'll show you how that looks and now that I have that little brim all pinned into place there it's just a matter of going around again with that little with your extra strong thread and sewing that little overcasting stitch to hold those edges together do make sure those edges are lined up and that you're catching both of those little edges of that brim they should hold together with that zigzag stitch so again I'm just going to make my way right the way around that little circle and you notice I'm working from the brim underside right so a little hat is taking shape so we have our little brim now tapped into place so before I was working from the brim side like this now we're going to flip it over fold that little brim down and we're going to work from the other side and it's easier this way because we can see we've got our very white fabric so it does make it easier to see our stitches now we're actually going to sew the seam and I've got my extra strong thread in black and I'm sewing a stab back stitch a straight stab back, back stitch all the way around the outside now I'm going to pop a little link up there for a video that uh, shows you how to sew the stab back stitch but you can see I'm just coming in from behind I'm going through both layers keeping my stitches quite small and I'm going back into the same 
hole that I just came out of each time. You can see I'm holding all of those layers together. You want to make sure that you are catching all of those edges. You can see I'm just going back in each time. So it's a fully linked stitch and it's very, very strong. But always coming from behind and then back. And you can see that's not giving me a nice straight little, very, very strong little stitch. And I keep rotating and folding that brim over and that allows me to hold that little section flat as I work on it. So I'm going to stitch that entire brim into place with that little stitch. So that has my little hat all finished, brim stitched into place. And what I've gone ahead and done is just filled up the little top section of that hat. Now it's not really firm because I don't want that little top section to be a big ball. But it's just filled it out nicely to give it some shape and I've used my wool felting needle in there and I've been able to pack that all nice and flat so that's not going to move. It's going to stay right where it is and now all we need to do is add it to our little snowman. So you just want to make sure your side seams are actually at the side and where you put it is entirely up to you. So you can have it smack bang in the middle of his head I like it just a little bit off center and a little bit to the front. And we still want to make sure that we're covering that little center gather in the head there. So I'm just going to throw my pins through right there on that brim. Right the way around. Now, as far as sewing this one on, it's very straightforward. You really don't need to stitch it on sort of perfectly all the way around. You really just need some anchor points. And we can do that. So have a little look at that. Check that you've got your little shape right. I like to pull that brim down at the front, curl those sides up. The felt is beautifully moldable for that. So once I'm happy with that little positioning, which I am, I've taken my, I've got my medium doll needle with a long thread of my black extra strong thread. It's just a single strand. All I'm going to do is come in at the side underneath here where it will be hidden. And I've taken some of that fabric up and I'm going to come out somewhere right here on that brim. I hope you can see that. I'm going to come out right where, I, basically where I've got my pins. Takes a little bit of finding the right spot. Just about there will be fine. So that pin is going through the hat and some of the, the head fabric. So pull that one all the way through and I've got my little knot will hold that at the end. So now all I need to do is take a little stitch. It's very invisible because it's black. Dive into that head and I'll come out somewhere at the back there and I've taken some of the head as well so I've crossed over pulling that one through and make sure you're pulling it nice and tight each time I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to dive in and I'm going to come out just somewhere else around the brim and you can see it's super simple to do when you've got that doll needle And we really only need maybe about oh, five or six anchor points. So I'm going to keep taking my little stitches until I've got that little head, that little hat, sorry, nice and secure on that little head. And I will just crisscross through it till I've got that little circle and it's all set nice and secure. So when you finish, you can just tuck in under there and cast off underneath your brim there where it won't be seen. Okay, so that has our little hat all neatly and securely into place. And our final step is to create our, we're going to make our little broom. 
and the first thing that we're going to do so we've got our little double felt piece that you've cut you've got your measurements there with your templates the first thing I've done is that I've gone ahead and just stitched a, a zigzag in a, a color of your choice across the top there now you don't have to do this you can you can um, add a little braid afterwards once we've rolled it up onto our little stick um, you could tie some twine around it whatever you like you may have other decorative stitches on your machine that you can do that with um, you could also blanket stitch that edge just for something a little bit different so I've done that gone ahead of time and done that now I have also measured down one and a half centimeters and drawn a line because that's where our little cutting lines are going to to create our little tassels so I've then also gone ahead and drawn some straight lines down and that's just to help me for a cutting guide so what I'm going to do now is just cut my little tassels into place with a nice sharp pair of scissors only up to that line and you can see that those little drawn lines are really going to help me keep all those little tassels nice and straight so it's just a matter of making your way along that whole length with your little tassels there I've got all of my little tassels cut in and you've noticed there that I made my double felt out of two different colors the reason for that is when you actually roll that up you get that lovely little um, depth of color there that little pop of the light color on the inside you could do it the other way around if you wanted and the dark showing from the inside so I'm going to go with this way and the dark on the outside so now that they're all cut this is just as simple as you need your hot glue you can do this with clear craft glue but I find that hot glue is easier because it's very very quick drying so all you're going to do is take your little stick you're going to hot glue and we don't want to come too far down so it's probably about an inch and we're going to hot glue that little stick into place and then we're going to start rolling and you're going to hot glue a little bit of the way and you're simply going to roll up that little stick keep adding your hot glue as you go keep on rolling to get right up to the end and just make sure that last little bit is nicely sealed and you will have your little broom all safely secure on the end of that stick so I'm just going to go and apply my hot glue so that has my little broom all finished all hot glued and all done and as I said you could add any kind of little embellishments around the tip of that one um, all sorts of bits and pieces you can some little braid um, whatever you'd like so my little ribbon holder just sits like that now depending on what your uh, ribbon is and what you're using for your little broom your little broom may just sit nicely just like that I like to just anchor mine just a little bit further up so the way that I do that is I've got my double pearl thread and I'm going to thread my little bells my little balls are running away I'm going to thread my little come back okay so I'm going to start with a little ball take that through first then I'm going to take my little bell And it's just a little way up just about here where I want that little broom to be anchored so I'm going to dive in there and just take a little bit of my fabric a little bit of my filling is all tangled up there out you come okay and I'm going to take my needle back through another little ball 
So we might go little bell first. Little bell and a little ball. Pull them all up together. And I'm just going to tie off and make a little bow just there that's going to hold that little broom into position and keep it nice and close to the side of his head there. So like I said, depends on what you've used for your ribbon, depends on what you've used for your little stick. Yours might just sit in there nicely and stay in position. And again here, you could add a whole lot of little embellishments here, some little Christmas charms and so on. Um, but make it your own. So I'm going to give that a little tie off with a little bow. And there we have it. That completes our little snowman. And he does come together very quickly, doesn't he? Seems huge to me. He's, he's the largest thing I've made in a little while. It was good I've been able to give you quite a substantial size project because pieces were all quite small so that worked out well so look i hope you've enjoyed making him and that he's come along at the right time of the year and uh, i can only imagine what you will do with him so many embellishments you could do i would definitely like to see some very christmasy things perched on that little brim of that hat there but i know that you are all very capable of uh, absolutely tinseling him up so I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. So thank you all for joining me today and making little Mr. Snowman. He did come together very quickly, didn't he? I'm sure he's going to be a great centerpiece in your home. We're coming up to that very busy time of the year. So make sure that you check out my other videos. If you're looking for little gift ideas, I think there's nothing better than a home homemade gift is there. So make sure that you subscribe. Don't miss any of those upcoming uh, free patterns and, and designs that I'm putting together for you all. I've definitely got some little shelf sitters come up, coming up. I love designing little shelf sitters and uh, I often feel a bit bad because all of the things that I design sort of don't really serve any purpose. So I don't sort of, I'm not an oven mitt kind of designer. But never mind, I guess that designing things that bring joy is a good thing. Joy is what we need right now, isn't it? So I do hope everybody's staying safe. You can follow me on Instagram and you can see all of the little patterns and designs coming together. Sometimes you can get a little sneaky peek and have a little guess at what's coming up. And um, that's all very fun too. Thank you so much for all of your beautiful comments and your support. Um, it's all such a very positive community. Let's keep it going that way. Remember, everybody, everything good that comes to you in your day, just make sure that you share it. Just make sure that you pay it forward. And until next time, it's Haru from me.